Attention all men's ministry leaders. We are excited to announce the first ever No Regrets National Leadership Summit, April 26th and 27th at Elmbrook Church in Brookfield, Wisconsin. This incredible two-day summit will give you the strategies and tools needed to take your ministry to men to the next level. You'll hear from nationally renowned pastor, author, and speaker Steve Carter, along with Steve Sonderman and many of the seasoned leadership trainers of the No Regrets team. The National Leadership Summit is the perfect place to bring your entire team of leaders to hang out together, learn together, and envision the future of men's ministry at your church together. Register today and take advantage of our lowest pricing option beginning at just $89 per person. Don't miss the No Regrets National Leadership Summit April 26th and 27th at Elmbrook Church in Brookfield, Wisconsin. For more information, visit noregretsmen.org and sign up today. We'll plan to see you in April. Welcome to the No Regrets Leadership Podcast, where leaders are empowered to equip and disciple men. Welcome to the uh, No Regrets uh, Leadership Podcast. My name is Steve Sonderman, and uh, I am so happy to be able to uh, host our podcast for today. Uh, As you know, every single week, we seek to encourage you and equip you as a leader of men. And some of you may be leading a, a men's small group. Maybe you're just seeking to, to minister to the guys right in your, your workplace. Uh, you're leading a, you're an associate pastor, a pastor leading a congregation. W- whatever your role is, um, every single week, we desire to just give you a few nuggets, a few um, pieces of information that will help you to more effectively minister to the guys all around you in your sphere of influence. And uh, to that end, uh, you know that we like to bring on different authors and speakers and thought leaders in the area of leadership and discipleship, uh, Christian growth. And uh, this week, I'm I'm so excited to have a good friend of ours, uh, Steve Carter, with us. Steve has been a friend of No Regrets for many years, uh, a good friend of mine, and just a huge encouragement in my own life. Uh, Steve uh, has been a speaker at the conference a number of times and has written a number of books. And today we're going to have an opportunity to talk about one of his newer books. And so, Steve, thanks so much for taking time to uh, be with us today. Oh, Steve, you know, I'm a huge fan of you. No regrets. And um, yeah, thanks for having me on. It means the world. You bet. So listen, why don't you just start? It's been a little while since you we've had a chance to talk. Uh, bring our listeners up to speed on what's sort of what's new with you and maybe your family and what you've been doing lately. Yeah. So, you know, we're still in the Chicago land. We love it. Uh, I serve at a local church in the Northwest suburbs called Forest City, which has been great. Teach there, uh, do a lot of leadership stuff. Um, I host a podcast called Craft and Character. So I just do a lot of coaching with communicators. Um, and then also I'm leading out on the Preaching Institute at the Wheaton College's Billy Graham Institute. We're really trying to help people get better at the craft of yeah. teaching while always ensuring that their character leads the way. And then, um, like you said, getting the chance to to write, which is really, really exciting. And a new book drops May 7th, Grieve, Breathe, Receive, which is really, really fun. And I feel su- super humbled. And um, But the biggest joy of my life right now is my family. I just uh, I love being a dad to a 15-year-old and a 10-year-old. And um, my wife, we just celebrated 20 years. And uh, we're still, thanks. And I feel like we're just still figuring it out, which has been really, really good. So. Well, oh, that is wonderful. Well, and you had a big year with with Michigan, uh, winning a national championship. I mean, you had to be pumped. Oh man, I'm telling you, it's been 26 years. Not as long as it was for us Cubs fans, um, but <laughs> but 26 years uh, for the University of Michigan since we won the national championship, and you know it was it was amazing. I mean, what a year of resilience what a year of having to overcome against all the odds and uh i mean this is this is going to be an amazing 30 for 30 episode someday you know it's right, just right. uh was yeah. really really special and to be able to be a, a part of uh, many of the games this year as a huge fan was really really exciting oh good well it was just a great great tournament and i i just loved every one of the games such great games and teams and uh yeah, I really was happy for you and for Michigan and for the Big Ten yep. uh, to, to finally uh, come out on top. That was uh, 
there's nothing better. I just, I love college football. So that yep. was wonderful. Well, you mentioned it earlier. You have a new book coming out in May. Uh, I've read, I didn't read the book because it's not out yet, but I read a little about it. And I am so excited, Steve. Why don't you tell us about your new book, Grieve, Breathe, Receive, Finding a Faith Strong Enough to Hold Us. How did, uh, how did this come about? Tell us a little bit of the backstory and why you're excited for it. Yeah. So um, in 2018, my life was on a trajectory that I saw, you know, hey, for the next 25 years, what it was going to be. It's going to be mm -hmm. leading at a church I absolutely loved, chaplain for the Bears, doing work with them. Like I just, like I saw like my life and then um, some unfortunate stuff happened and it kind of forced me to make a decision. Um, and so I stepped out of my role. And the reason I did that was just because I, I felt like um, that my desire for reconciliation and the truth wasn't being fully like exercised. And as a faith leader, I just felt like, man, I, I need to be able to do this and I don't want to play with people's trust. And so mm -hmm. I stepped out of a leadership role and it kind of had us go to the desert. And I thought it was going to be a metaphorical desert, but um, mm -hmm. we ended up moving to Arizona. And for four years, we lived in the desert. Mm -hmm. And I was really trying to wrestle through two questions. And the first question is like, why do people do what they do? You know, mm -hmm. and, and that really led to the first book, The Thing Beneath the Thing. Mm -hmm. But the second question I kept wrestling with is, what do you do when life does what it does? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when life just sucker punches you when you didn't see it coming mm -hmm. when the shock the surprise and that really led to grieve breathe receive and mm -hmm. i think for many many of us men like man we know how to achieve mm -hmm. we don't know how to grieve and for mm -hmm. many of us it's almost like jenga we're like stacking up these grievances that mm. come, whether someone lets us down or, or someone slights us or someone betrays us or someone leaves us or someone abandons, like someone neglects us, someone hurts us. Like it's, and, and we almost in some ways, we think it's soft to actually stop and, and deal with this. And those grievances just start to pick up and pick up and pick up and pick up and build upon themselves. And all of a sudden then something happens and we don't necessarily know how to handle it. So what men, most men do is they choose unhealthy escapes. Yeah. And it only creates more pain. And so my hope is in the most accessible, biblical, like thoughtful way. Mm -hmm. I just want to, I almost want to refrain, reframe grief, not mm -hmm. as something like, oh my goodness, oh my, but like something where people can go, okay, this is where I'm at. And my simple definition of it is just this, is learning to honor what comes up when change shows up and, mm -hmm. and how to honor it well. And so I feel like if we can teach men and women how to, to do this, um, man, it has a chance to, to really help us make, be healthier and really more trust in the goodness of our father. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so helpful. And I, I, I just, I, see it in my own life and then in others too the, this that inability to grieve properly yeah and just to be able to identify that 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 hurt or that loss or that pain and then to to one identify it and then two to do something with it yep uh, rather yep. than just push push it down deeper and deeper right and yep. like you said i love that analogy just sort of builds on top of each other and then it just it, it just comes out sideways um yep. in so many different ways um, some are socially accepted and some are not, and they're yep. just hurtful, like you said. Yeah. And you've probably had so many moments like that, Steve, where you've like sat oh, with yeah. someone and, and you realize like, oh, this person didn't wake up this morning thinking they were going to go do X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. But like when you really start to hear it, it was, mm -hmm. it was some pain that they didn't actually ever work through and it just caught up to them and something, something else happened that led them to, but it was like. And and it just gives you a sense of empathy. And I just started to realize, man, if 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 I don't ever heal from this pain and get transformed from this pain, mm -hmm. we're just going to transfer it. Mm -hmm. And and so, mm -hmm. grieve, breathe, receive. Really, in many ways, is is kind of like the is Holy Weekend, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and Sunday. And and that's kind of this this oh. part where I talk about how we're in this grief journey that 
Um, Friday is the day that we're in grief, you know, um, Saturday was the day of like waiting and you're just breathing in and out. Like, where's this whole thing going? But you think you can get through the grief, grief, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Sunday is the surprise. And when Jesus like resurrects, he still has the scars. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like still with him. And so you kind of go this movement from in grief yeah. to through grief to now just being surprised to walk with grief, but it doesn't hold the same weight as it once did yeah. in your life. Right. Yeah. You're no longer a prisoner to it. Yes, exactly. Right. I mean, you, you, you've, you've been able to, to sort of deal with it, walk through it, acknowledge it, like you said, honor yep. it and, yep. but then move on. Steve, what have you, as you think about this whole idea of, of, of breathing, explain a little bit more what you mean by that. Yeah, that's great. So those three words, like grieve, breathe, receive, I kind of journaled about it. And so it was kind of like grieve what is, grieve what I thought it was going to be, grieve how key people let me down. Because anytime we're just, it didn't go the way I thought it was going to be. But the breathing, kind of that holy Saturday, the day between Good Friday and the resurrection, um, is almost the sense of like the breathing in his mercies that are new each morning mm. and, and breathing out whatever bitterness and resentment or unforgiveness that I have. Um, because once you, once you find yourself in those Saturdays, those days of kind of the aftermath, you're wondering what's, how do we get here? And oftentimes anger and frustration mm -hmm. and judgment start like, just building within you. And I, and I felt like the, just having some moments to like, just exhaling all of that, that negative unforgiveness, um, resentment, yeah. bitterness. Um, mm -hmm. because if that, if that gets a hold of my heart, um, it's gonna, it's gonna choke my soul out. And, and I just, realize how often I just needed to slow down and realize, man, I, I still got some anger towards that person, or I still got some real sadness towards that. And how do I just keep going? Mm -hmm. My job is to prepare my heart to be mm -hmm. ready for reconciliation, not to like feel the energy of just getting angry just because I can, but my work is to prepare my heart to be mm -hmm. tender and yeah. forgive the other person. So that's at the heart of what, uh, right. breathe is all about yeah. it's just preparing oh. our hearts for forgiveness okay. yeah and i like that because it's it's a i like the way you said it's it's a breathing in and a breathing out yep. it's not one or the other it's a both and yes and uh boy i had not thought about it that way that that that's helpful hey church leaders do you desire to teach your men how to impact their world for christ in their own place and space then consider bringing disciple maker 101 live directly to your church Disciple Maker 101 Live covers the same material as our flagship 10-week online course, but in a condensed version. Steve Sonderman, founder of No Regrets, will come to your church and walk your men through this transformative course while inspiring and equipping them to make disciples who make disciples. For more information, visit our website, noregretsmen.org, and book Disciple Maker 101 Live today. And then, okay, then, then receive. Yeah. So the receive, okay. you know, if, if, if grieve is what is grief, what I thought it was going to be grief, I'll keep it all the way down. Breathe is breathing in those new mercies, exhaling all that bitterness, resentment. Receiving though is receive what I need to learn, receive what I need to own, receive who I need to, who God wants me to become in spite of all of this. And mm. there is a transformation that happens, you know, mm. if you go through the process well. Mm -hmm. And I also think of, um, you know, I think if you asked anybody, the Roman soldiers, the Jewish leaders, the disciples, the women, if they thought that resurrection was going to happen on <laughs> Easter morning, I don't think so. And, and right. part, of, part of the receiving is the receiving of the surprise. And, mm. and, and, God wants to surprise you. And on the other side of your grief is a surprise. And sometimes the surprise is, oh my goodness, like it's a new relationship. Sometimes it's a new opportunity. Sometimes it's, it doesn't hurt as bad, but there's, there is a surprise. And so part of that is um, nobody saw Easter coming. Um, nobody saw resurrection coming, but if we are Easter people, living in a Good Friday world, 
We are people that believe in the surprise and we are looking for the surprise and we have hope for the surprise. And when we can be people who both grieve, but grieve with hope, we're actually declaring there could be an Easter morning for me as well in this. There mm -hmm. could be, there could be a, a, a newness that God wants to do yeah. in me through, yeah. even through this. So that's right. the heart of Sunday. Oh gosh. I mean, it's the gospel. I mean, it it's the gospel yeah. story, and not just 2,000 years ago, it's the gospel story in each of our lives on a daily basis, um, because every one of us experiences difficulties, pain, and hurt, and hardship, and, you know, all the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. It's, what do you do with that? Yeah, yeah. And and, 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 staying, and staying open to the miracle of it all, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. one of the chapters I write about you know, and Steve, you and I have talked about this before, but my my dad, you know, he and I, he's my adopted father. Mm -hmm. um, and we went through a real tough patch, but I didn't think that that relationship was going to be reconciled. Um, but God got a hold of his heart and there was a level of humility and ownership. And then God did an amazing work. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the that receive and that surprise, even in the midst of grief, was oh my goodness like miracles and reconciliation is possible and mm -hmm. i realized how easy it is when you talk about it's the gospel how easy it is is to to not have hope for reconciliation mm -hmm. or not have hope and mm -hmm. I, I imagine many men are listening right now mm -hmm. who there's a relationship in their life maybe with a father maybe with a child and part of that gospel story we hold is it there's still another day which yeah. means there's still another moment and that moment is brimming with redemptive potential. Mm -hmm. And I just had to wake up to that and um, made me realize that, Hey, there's no such thing as irreconcilable in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So that's powerful because I think, as you mentioned, I, I think of the guys listening. I know that there's going to be guys listening that have uh, maybe a wayward son or daughter. Yep. They're just like, Will they ever come back? Will yep. they? Will we ever reconcile? Or maybe it's in their marriage relationship, and they've they're just uh, they're just living two separate lives, and they've been to counseling and they've done different things, and or it's the stuck in a job. I mean, the list goes on, right? Yep. We could sit here and make a list a mile long, but it is easy to just go to church and do the stuff, but really not have hope. That's I right. mean, you know, you just yeah, okay, I believe that, but. And, um, but the, the, the message here is, is the Sunday message and um, gosh, Steve, this is such good stuff. I just see how this is going to be so valuable. And I, um, I mean, I'm putting you on the spot here, but is there, are there discussion questions for the, the with it yet or, or not yet? Or there come? are yeah. Okay. At, at the end of each chapter, um, similar to the thing beneath the thing, I put three or four questions okay. and then, um, we're filming like a small group curriculum. And so mm -hmm. that's just, we're going to make a, a church is actually filming that. It's like what I love about the kingdom of God. It's like a church is filming that in Houston and they're just creating it to give away for free to any church. Wow. And so that mm -hmm. there'll be more on my website about that, yeah. but, um, yeah, it's going to be awesome just to, to help mm -hmm. um, people walk through the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, greet, breathe, receive, um, and the and the most healthy communal way possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we'll we'll put all the information uh, on on the in the, in the show notes, and we'll, we'll make sure that we're we're pointing people. And and guys, I just want to you know just encourage you as as a, individually to do it. Obviously, you can read the book, but as a small group, this would be a great thing because this is an area that so many guys overlook and they just push down and do not deal with. And uh, we all are grieving different things, and uh, we need to we'll be healthier, stronger, better men if we do deal with it. And what a better place than to do it in community, yep. <laughs> to do it with yep. other guys, yep. and to be able to process it and talk about it and be open and honest about it. No, thank you, man. I, I totally, I totally agree. And and especially guys, like you start talking about grief to your wife, and your wife's gonna be like, oh, he's going deep. It's gonna, it's gonna, right. you're gonna look, you're gonna look good. 
for doing this. I'm yeah, just saying, cause you're going to like yeah. dealing with some of the good, hard, beautiful, mm-hmm. messy, emotional stuff. And she's going to see the the dependence and strength that you have to yeah. in Christ and in the relationship. And it's going to be good for you too, as well. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's also going to be an inc- wonderful model for your children. Yes. You help them to under begin to understand these concepts and to understand what it is to grieve well and to, you know, receive and breathe. Yeah. Yep. Yep. In so many ways. Well, listen, we just we have a few minutes left here. Um, and but this was the main thing we wanted to cover. But I, I also want to just tell our listeners that Steve's going to be joining us uh at the last weekend in April, the 26th and 27th. Uh, we're doing our first ever men's ministry leadership summit uh in Brookfield. And uh, Steve's gonna be our keynote speaker. And so, Steve, would you mind just telling us a little bit, just you know, of what you might be be talking about uh in those keynote sessions? Yeah, so I I have been working on some new content, and it's all centers around the soul of the leader. Mm-hmm. And the more that I've just dived into the soul mm-hmm. and what that means, especially when we're dealing with complex issues in men's ministry, we're, we're dealing with, you know, we just talked about grief, but we're talking about, you know, just all of the uniqueness of this world and cultures presenting and to create um, almost a roadmap straight from the scriptures that will help men understand how to, how to like actually have a integrated, healthy, whole soul so that they're leading from that place, not anything else, um, leading from that space of dependency and just becoming the kind of leader, pastor, shepherd, um, that is really safe and worthy of trust. And so we're just going to unpack this from the text. I cannot wait. I mean, anything that no regrets does, I'm like, check, I'm down. But this one to pour into the leaders of leaders, I was like, I got to be there. These, This is my tribe. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. We appreciate your coming. And I know that you've already said yes to, I think, was it 26? Uh, 20, 26. I'm like, yeah. I was. I was so pumped. I'm so yeah. pumped. Yeah, it's unbelievable. We already yeah. have 25s done, and and we're so excited to have you back for that. But the main thing is this April, guys, if you're not signed up, you can go to our website, uh, no regrets men and, um, you know, .org, and all the information is there for the conference, and we're going to have great breakouts. Steve's going to be doing the keynote sessions, and it's going to be a time just to connect and network with other like-minded guys who are seeking to minister to men in their sphere of influence. So we're really excited about the conference, and uh, uh, hope that you'll be able to join us for that. So, well, Steve, thanks so much for for being with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Awesome, my friend. Such a great, great honor and um, cheering you on, my friend. Yep. Well, thank you. And so guys, uh, make sure you get the book. It's coming out first week of May and you're going to want to get Steve's new book. And and again, read it yourself, but also take your men's small group through it. And it would be a a wonderful uh, experience to work through this material uh, together and then to process it and to grow together as men. So on behalf of Steve and myself, we want to thank you so much for being with us. Remember, if this has been helpful, pass it on to the other guys in your sphere of influence, other small group leaders, leaders, other men that you think will be encouraged by this. And uh, and so with that, I look forward to talking with you next week. Thank you for joining the No Regrets Leadership Podcast. For more information and to access past recordings, please visit www.menwithnoregrets.org slash podcast. LifeCamp USA is a nonprofit organization that mentors young men who have lost a father due to military or law enforcement service. LifeCamp USA provides an all expenses paid, week long, world class camp experience that inspires, equips, and navigates these fatherless young men through some of life's toughest moments. LifeCamp USA's mentors serve grieving families by helping these sons establish healthy identities, values, character, and goals without the crucial aid of a father in their life. To learn more about Life Camp's mission, visit lifecampusa.org. Again, that's lifecampusa.org.